When demons are awakened from the darkness and turn the world into a living hell, the goddess of faith will select six heroes, and these six will be given the powers to save the world. It is always only six that are chosen, and for this reason, they're known as the brave of the six flowers. A mysterious man, called Adlet Mayer, came to Piana to prove himself in front of the goddess of fate, in order to become a brave. He has the verbal tick of calling himself the strongest man in the world in almost every sentence, a verbal tick that people often poke fun at, calling him an idiot, and all sorts of insults. He interrupted the semi-final match between Battle and Quato in the holy tournament that chooses the Braves, proclaiming to be the strongest man in the world. The royal guards tried to stop Adlet, but he took them out. Afterward, he fought the two warriors and incapacitated them both, before being captured by more guards and thrown into jail. While in jail, a maid sneaked inside to meet Adlet. She was impressed by his fight and asked him about his fighting style, philosophy, and goals. Adlet replied that he believes he will become a Brave, one of the six chosen warriors to fight the the demon god, who also goes by the Magin, and that he wishes to fight alongside Princess Nashitania if she were to be chosen as a brave. Adlet also discovers that something or someone has been killing the six braves. He is then moved to an isolated prison cell in a pit. For many days and nights, Adlet remained in the dark pit, with barely any food and water. Some weeks later, the braves were chosen, and Adlet received the crest of the six flowers on his right hand. The maid arrived, revealed to be the princess, much to Adlet's surprise, and rescued him from his cell. Nashitania showed him her crest, and goes on to free him from his cell at the expense of her soldiers, trapping them in the same pit they had thrown Adlet in. They both fled from Piena and began heading west on horseback towards the land of the Howling Demons, to meet the other braves and defeat the demon god. For several days, Adlet and Nashitanya got to know each other through talking and sparring. Upon rebuking her, Adlet found out about her mischievous nature, when she pretended to be saddened and scared of his anger towards her. He was also able to see how her abilities worked, and her free-spiritedness, which usually provokes him. Despite that, they began to grow closer, but when a village in their path was attacked by the Kayauma, which are evil demons, Adlet and Nashitanya rushed to their defense and were able to fight together briefly. However, as they were escorting villagers away, Adlet learned of a single girl who had stayed behind. Nashitanya implored Adlet that their mission to defeat the demon god was more important than helping one girl, and possibly being killed by a Kayawuma before then. Unable to do so, Adlet went on ahead of her, leaving Nashitanya to defend the villagers against any remaining Kayawuma. Upon reaching the village, Adlet was surprised to find several Kayawuma corpses, and a ball of iron as the only evidence. Then, he found a girl with white hair and black clothing, helping a dog and its young pup setting them free. Flamey Speedra tells Adlet to leave her alone, stating she must fight the Magin by herself. However, Adlet chases after her until she is forced to travel with him. He sends a message to Nashitanya with his horse, telling her he found another of the six braves, and to continue towards the peninsula where the Magin is without him. Adlet and Flamey eventually run into a fortress, where soldiers explain to them about a barrier that should help the braves in a nearby temple. As Adlet and Flamey continued to travel, they were suddenly attacked by Nashitanya and Goldoff Aura, who is another one of the six braves and almost like Nashitanya's personal guard. Nashitanya warns Adlet to stay away from Flamey as they suspect that she is the Six Flowers killer. As Flamey and Nashitanya fight from a distance, Goldoff charges at her. Adlet tries to stop him, but Goldoff pushes him aside. Trying to end the fight, Adlet shouts for all of them to stop, and says that Flamey is not their enemy as she is also one of the Six Braves. Nashitanya and Goldoff are surprised, and inform Adlet that Flamey is the Six Flowers killer. Flamey does not deny it, and confirms that she is indeed the killer. She then names some of her victims, and then says that Goldoff and Nashitanya are also her targets, while aiming her gun at them. Adlet asks if Lura, a saint that recently went missing, was also her target. Flamey answers that she was, but that she does not know what happened to her. Adlet then asks her why she killed all the potential braves, and Flamey replies that the Magin could only return if weak warriors remained to be chosen as braves. Goldoff and Nashitanya are now convinced she is their enemy, and are about to kill Flamey when Adlet blocks them. He refuses to believe that someone trying to revive the demon god would be chosen as a brave, and says that he will side with Flamey if he has to fight. Nashitanya finally decides to agree agree with Adlet, and tells Goldoff that they'll stop fighting. She then informs Flamey that she still doesn't believe her, and that she only trusts Adlet. As the group continues their journey, they notice several flying Kayawuma heading for the temple. The Braves rush to the temple but are blocked by a different group of Kayawuma. As they battle, Nashitanya instructs Adlet to go ahead to the temple. When Adlet reaches the temple, he notices an injured priestess. He tries to help her, but she tells him to hurry inside. Adlet tries to open the door but it does not open, so he blasts it open with some explosives. Immediately afterward, two armored soldiers exit from the inside 
inside and attack Adlet. He tries to ask the priestess what had happened, but she turns out to be a shape-shifting Kaiowuma and escapes. After defeating the soldiers, who turn out to be just suits of armor, Adlet feels a cold sense of dread before entering the temple, and notices mist appearing from the ground, fearing someone had already activated the barrier. Adlet then enters the activation chamber, only to discover that his fear had come true. When he notices the sword had already been shoved into the pedestal, he looks around the room but does not find anyone else inside. Nashatanya, Flamey, and Goldoff arrive, and Nashatanya asks Adlet why he activated the barrier. Adlet insists it was not him, and that someone else activated it and then disappeared. Fearing that they are trapped, the group proceeds to the pedestal and confirms that the sword is still inside. While the group tries to figure out what has happened, Goldoff manages to turn off the barrier and remove the sword, but Flamey says that the fog is still there. Adlet tries to turn it off by cutting his hand and dripping his blood on the pedestal, while reciting, barrier, release, but nothing changed. Nashitanya then panics, grabbing the sword and attacking the pedestal, shouting barrier release, and claims that she was the owner of the barrier while breaking the slab. Flamey stops her, telling her that there is no point in panicking, when they suddenly hear footsteps. A young girl, called Chamut, arrives and asks what had happened. She recognizes the members of the group, except for Adlet. Adlet asks who she is, and Chamut introduces herself and announces that she was also chosen as a brave. Adlet tells Chamot that he is the strongest man in the world, but ends up confusing Chamot as she is said to be the most powerful person in history, besides the goddess of fate. Chamot then decides that they should kill Flamey, who also prepares for a fight, but Adlet and Nashitanya stop them. Another one of the six braves arrives, a girl called Mora, who's wondering what the group is arguing over, but quickly realizes that Chamot was about to start a fight. Mora then orders Chamot to stop, and tells the group that there is an outsider among them. She reveals that she had been traveling with a man she met the day before, called Hans Humpty, who is also a brave. Adlet orders everyone to show their crests, and they realize that there are seven of them. Mora tells everyone the story of the saint of the single flower, who split her power into six for each of the braves, so it was impossible for there to be more or less than six of them. Adlet and Hans went outside to find a way out, but unfortunately, they went in circles. When they went back, they saw Flamey cuffed as the initial seventh brave, and the prime suspect for activating the barrier. Mora then suggests they introduce themselves to gather information about each other. During Flamey's introduction, she revealed herself as a half-human, half-Kaiowuma entity, born from a human father and a fiend mother. Adlet then reveals his story, but Hans saw a flaw in it, therefore making him the prime suspect. Adlet, in his confusion and anxiety, took Flamey as his hostage and poisoned her to keep her unconscious. He escapes the temple, but Hans managed to throw a dagger on him, slowing him down. He then passed out because of the blood loss while escaping. While he was down, he remembered how he went to his master and begged to take him as his student. As he regained consciousness, he noticed he had bandages on and realizes that Flamey patched him up. They both talked about their pasts, and as they open up to each other, he then speculated that there might be an eighth brave who helped the seventh, and that he needs to find out to prove his innocence. Adlet told Flamey about his past, how he was taught to fight and even learn science from his master. He also talked about a lizard-like humanoid Kaiowuma, who had three wings and went to their village when he was young. Flamey then confirmed that it was the same fiends who convinced her mother to give birth to her. Because of this, Adlet's best friend and sister died, leaving him behind. Flamey he then reveals that her mother had pretended to love her, and tried to kill her after Flamey disappointed her, as she couldn't kill Chamot. Feeling betrayed by her own world, as well as everything she loved, she cut ties with the Kaiowuma, and gained the strong resolution of killing the Majin in retaliation. They then parted ways, and Flamey headed back to the others. Inside the temple, the other braves devised a plan to capture and kill Adlet. As they split into groups to search for Adlet, he went to the temple, where he was attacked by hands. Adlet was able to escape, but then engaged in a battle with Hans in the forest. Adlet is trying to convince Hans somehow that he is not the seventh, but Hans suspects him still. As Adlet tried to trick Hans, he did not kill him when he had the chance to prove that he is not the imposter. Hans then told Adlet that he is the seventh brave, slicing his throat open. Adlet then realized that it was a hallucination, and Hans decided to believe in him as he saw his dying reaction, which would be different had he been the imposter. Meanwhile, Nashitanya speculated that Hans might be the seventh brave, and is asking Goldoff for help and to trust her that Adlet is innocent. Adlet and Hans went back to the temple to find clues, but Chamut was outside and decided she was bored of waiting, so she would just kill everyone to see if they were the traitor, attacking both of them by summoning her Juma, which are like her pets. Adlet and Hans battled Chamut, but her fiends would always regenerate, making them hard to defeat. They then thought of incapacitating Chamut to stop the fiends. It was a success, and they captured Chamut. They asked her if she knows anything about the activation of the barrier, and she nodded no. Adlet went to search for more clues, 
Jones and use the bomb that Flamey gave to give a signal to her. Flamey notices the signal and they meet each other. Adlet hypothesized about a saint's involvement in the matter, but Flamey rebuked them. Back at the temple, Hans told Mora and Chamut the same thing, but Mara refused to believe it. Meanwhile, Nashitanya confirms with Goldov if someone died by checking her crest. Adlet told Flamey his theory about the seventh, and then confessed his love for her, but she became even more skeptical, believing Adlet was trying to deceive her. Hans told Mora and Chamo the same hypothesis, which made Mora call for Nashitanya and Goldov to use their powers. She told them that Hans was severely injured by Adlet, making Nashitanya snap and furious that she had trusted and defended him. Flamey pursued the escaping Adlet and made a signal to the others of their location. Mora caught up and the three engaged in a battle, but then Adlet surrendered and convinced Mora about Flamey's innocence, so the others wouldn't suspect her if he dies. Mora tried to kill Adlet, but Flamey decided to believe Adlet and stopped Mora. Adlet and Flamey then escaped but were cornered by Nashitanya and Goldov who were also out to kill Adlet because of Mora's lie. Adlet and Flamey were cornered by Mora, Nashitanya, and Goldov. Adlet tried to go back to the temple to meet with Hans while Flamey backed him up. However, Mora and Goldov stopped Flamey, and Nashitanya pursued Adlet in the process. He felt the chills as Nashitanya gave the final blow, and blocked her weapon using his hands, kicking her to escape. Goldov followed him until they went back to the place where they fought the fiends near the temple. As Goldov, Nashitanya, Mora, and the captured Flamey got back together, Nashitanya was shocked to see Chamot with hands alive. She then apologized to Adlet for attacking him. Adlet finally made a conclusion as to how he or she might have done it. His theory involved the sun saint, Rira, being kidnapped, and was told to raise the temperature for over a week. As soon as one of the braves opened the temple, they killed her, dropping the temperature, and a fiend ate her body. Hans was able to find the body, which then concludes as to who the seventh brave was. Adlet reveals that Mora might have been the seventh brave if his deductions were correct, but Chamot rebuked his conclusion. She and Hans were able to find copies of the tablet and tools that might have been used for the real activation of the barrier. On the second tablet were instructions to reactivate the fog barrier, which was by removing the knife and shattered tablet, dripping blood all over the stand, reciting the spell, and breaking the tablet. This made everyone think that the person who broke the tablet was the seventh brave. Flamey confirmed that it was Nashitanya, shocking everyone. By deduction, Adlet also thought that the person who sent him to the temple was the one who planned everything from the very beginning. As he confirmed it, Nashitanya then surrendered and claimed that she really is the seventh brave, and Goldoff was shocked. Nashitanya told them that she wanted to kill them all because she believed that humans and fiends could live together in peace, but around 500,000 humans might die in the process. Adlet then ordered everyone to kill her, but she escaped. Adlet fainted due to the loss of blood, and as he regained consciousness, Mora apologized to him for not knowing who the seventh brave was, and also took care of his wounds. After resting, they all went outside to go to the Demon King. But to their surprise, they met Rolonia, Adlet's childhood friend and the Saint of Blood, who apologizes for being late because of the fog, and claims that she is one of the Braves. During the confusion, troops from Gwenbire went to the temple to tell everyone that more than a thousand fiends would gather there, to go back to the land of the Howling Demons. They stopped thinking first as to who might be the seventh Brave, and strategized to kill the Demon King. And this brings the anime to an end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, take care.